Martin here, thank you for joining me for this week's turning project video which is all about pyrography and colouring with watercolour pencils. Um, a big thank you for all of your comments and stuff recently on other videos. Um, I think I'm up to date with replying to comments now, you'll be, uh, you'll be pleased to know. So if I haven't replied to you yet then bear with me and I will get on to you. Uh, this week's project video is an 11 inch sycamore platter. Um, the bottom has been stippled with um, pyrography and there's a um, my usual maker's mark in the bottom. And then on the inside here is um, a pentagram of sycamore leaves on a blue background. So it kind of looks like you're looking up through a canopy on a bright summer's day as you're lying back in the park reading a book and this is what you can see. And I loved turning this piece. Um, it was an absolute joy. It's taken about five hours, I guess, um, from start to finish. And there will definitely be more to follow. Um, please do like, share and subscribe if you have enjoyed uh, the video. And if you um, have any comments, then please do uh, leave them below. Everybody on my mailing list will receive um, a copy of the design, in case anybody's interested in it. And if you want to join the mailing list, I'll send you a copy of the design for this too. So without further ado, here is the turning, pyrographying and watercolouring of the sycamore pentagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. I've got um, an 11 inch block of uh, blank of sycamore on the lathe this morning, which I'm going to turn down into a shallow bowl or a shallow dish. And then on the inside bottom of the bowl, I'm going to put one of these designs, uh, which is a sycamore leaf design uh, because it's a sycamore blank. Uh, so I won't bore you with the main turning process, I'll just speed right the way through it and um, get into the grim and goy details of making it look really pretty. So with face shield on, nicely sharpened bowl gouge, let's get turning this baby down. Over at the pyrography machine, um, I've got a very thin um, bit um, nib point on the uh, on the pyrography pen itself. I think you can see that it's quite thin, um, and I've got the temperature set to a smidge below 650 degrees C, as previous experience has told me that that is how. That is the best temperature um, that I think the sycamore burns at. Um, and a little piece of 600 grit paper that I can use just to clean off um, any residue from the tip to keep it nice and clean. Now on the foot here, um, the same as I'm going to do on the rim, I'm going to stipple with 
probably thousands of tiny little dots, um, a little pattern or random pattern on the bottom of uh, on the bottom of the piece here. Um, and so when it's reached temperature, yep, I'm literally just going to add hundreds of little dots to the bottom of the piece. On this piece I don't want a bright high gloss, I want something a little bit softer. So I'm going to rub the sealer back with 0000 Y wool. And then get a Hampshire Sheen original. When it's dry you can buff it up with the lathe at high speed. I'm quite pleased with that so far. The piece is reversed in the chuck now and I want to have a relatively thick-ish wall and I'm looking down the piece and I think the bottom of the piece, because I want that to be fairly flat, is going to be about there-ish and then the wall I think will be about there but I need to square off the front first before I can make the final decision so let's get the lathe spinning face mask on the height of the piece a little bit as well because I thought it was just a, a, a smidge too high for the curve. Um, a very slight um, inward cut on the top of the rim and then a fairly flat or the bottom as flat as I can get it. So now it's ready to have the pyrography design put onto the bottom but I need to make sure that the design that I've chosen, which is this one, um, is absolutely dead centre. So on the design that you can download off the website, um, I've put a red spot in the very centre of the design. But I need to put a spot in the centre of the piece as well. So with a pencil, I can see the centre of the piece and then I'm going to leave a little pencil mark just there, right there in the centre so I can line the design up with the piece. Right, let's get it off the chuck, back over to the uh, pyrography machine and I'm going to cut out this design and we can figure out how we're going to stick it on. 
I've got the piece off the chuck and on the workbench and I've cut out the design that I want to use and I've orientated the piece how I I think how I want it to be so I've worked out where the top and the bottom is like that so there's some marking up here which I want at the top and then I'm going to place the design in the centre like so and then using the compass first of all actually I need some tape so I've got some of the the artist's masking tape or modeler's masking tape then pierce through the centre of the design with the compass and then just very carefully put the point of the compass down on the piece and then I can turn the design around to exactly the orientation that I want it which is like that and then I can stick the design down just like that so that is exactly where I want the piece to be now I need to transfer the design from the paper, the printed paper, onto the piece so I can then go over that with the pyrography pen. And for that I use, well, this stuff, Saril graphite paper. Um, it's much better than wax transfer paper uh, because it rubs out afterwards just like pencil. Um, whereas wax paper doesn't and it, it the, the end result with a wax transfer paper isn't as good as the transfer paper, the graphite transfer paper. And then you just slide the dark side of the graphite paper under your design. This is why you only stick one corner of your design so you can lift it up and move the graphite paper around. And then with a pen, quite literally trace over the design, applying a reasonable amount of pressure um, to transfer the design onto the wood. And working in the bottom of a bowl is quite tricky because your, your arm's at a funny angle. You can take that out to check and I hope you can see those first two lines there that I put on. So I'm going to get on with the rest of um, the transfer process because for you guys it'll be very boring. And believe me, it's not, <laughs> it's not that interesting for me either. And then when it's done, I'll come back and show you what the transfer looks like. When you've gone over the design, you can then take it off. Take it off the piece, but you need to check to make sure that you've gone over all of the lines. Now, it might look a little bit confusing um, when you take off, take off the transfer paper and see, but... If you keep the design nearby when you're actually doing the pyrography part of it, you can see you'll be able to cross-refer what's on the piece back to the design. Now on the design here, I've got lots of the little tendrils coming off um, the leaves um, in the design, but I haven't put them onto the pyrography transfer because I want to make each individual leaf well individual so they're going to, they're going to have um, different uh, different uh, tendrily bits on um, on uh, on each leaf so I'm now happy with that design as it is on the piece and I'm going to keep the actual design itself nearby and I'll be able to start the pyrography um, of it very shortly but I'm going to do the rim first because the rim does look fairly boring. So I'm going to do the same speckle that I did on the bottom of the piece on the rim. 
and then I'll be able to go into the centre of the piece and do the really interesting bit soon. So um, I'm not going to bore you with um, the stippling of the rim. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to do that off camera, and then uh, we'll be able to do the inside soon. Um, the outside is now all stippled, as you can see, and today is the day after I did this uh, because of domestic duties and stuff like that. And now I can go into the centre of the piece and um, really kind of bring it to life. So using the same tip that I had on yesterday, which is um, about a millimetre in diameter, I've got the machine set to a shade under 650 degrees C. And much the same as I did on the outside, um, I'm just going to go round the design and burn on, um, burn on the design through the um, uh, graphite transfer and we'll see it come to life. It's awkward leaning into the bowl like this, so I've got to be really careful. I'll just turn the temperature up to a tiny bit over 650. Now I've got the, the ring done, um, it took about, I don't know, 15 minutes, something like that. I've changed the tip of the pen um, to a slightly narrower one. This one's about three quarters of a millimetre, something like that. And now I can start doing the the inside uh, leaves, which is going to be, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I've got the design here just resting on the pencils so I can use it as a um, as a guide if I need to and, um, and it's just a case of tracing over the lines the same as um, the same as I did here but this time if I make a mistake I'm kind of scuppered so right let's get on with it design is now finished and if you look at the design design um, there are lots of little tendrils coming off of the sort of the stemmy bits in the leaf I'm not sure of the technical term um, which I need to add and I'm going to do those free handle so using the same tip on the pen I'm just going to add in the tendrils quite lightly but it's still a little bit flat so what you do then is you add some shading um, beneath the parts of the design that are overlaid um, like this leaf here for example this leaf here overlays this one with this part of its leaf and this part of its leaf but this leaf overlays this leaf um, at this point so we've got to add some shading around here and down here and you do that with a shading tip which is um, a flat spoon kind of spoon shaped tip and the way I do it is I lay the, the very tip of the piece of, of the tip the nib on the line I want to shade from put it on and drag it out just like so and that just gives a little bit of shade and 
where it needs to be. Very little pressure, but just enough to burn the piece of touch to add the shading where I want it to be. Just like so, and I, th I hope you can see that. That looks uh, that looks really super. I like that. There, um, I'm really happy with. Uh, with how that's come out, it really gives it a, th a really great 3D appearance. So next what we need to do is we've got to rub out the lines from the original design and for that you need to use um, a good quality soft rubber um, and I use this one here called um, by a company called Maped, Maped, something like that, it's that one anyway, um, and it's a Technic 600 whatever that means. I haven't got a clue. It's a rubber and it takes off the lines. That's all I care about. Lines all rubbed out and I've got out my watercolour pencils. I've got two sets here. Um, one is by a company called Mondaluz or Mondalutz, something like that. Um, and also a inexpensive set from uh, stationers here called WH Smith. I'm using two sets because I want lots of different shades of green. Now, although my normal set um, from WH Smith has um, one, two, three shades of green, um, I also want some other shades as well, just to kind of mix it up a bit. Uh, and you use watercolour pencils really easily. Um, you've got the pencil and you... Um, Draw it in. Um, and then I'm going to go around the shading, where I've done the shading, with um, a darker green. Bearing in mind that you're going to be applying water to this. So it, it doesn't have to be particularly good colouring because you'll We'll do it all kind of at the end with um, a paintbrush and water just to sort of blend it all in. look a bit of a mess um, but the next bit is where the magic happens um, so you get a little pot of water and a paintbrush or two and get a tiny tiny amount of water on the brush Make sure you wipe the brush off quite well and then blend in all the colours. And you do just need a tiny amount of water. Right, okay. Um, the sky blue's done, and as you can see, I've added quite a brave orange border to it, and also round the outside here, round the rim, I've blended some blue and orange. Um, and all I need to do with that is um, is just go round and blend it in with um, with the brush.
So as you're probably fairly bored of watching me um, paint this, I will be back when the piece is back on the lathe. Right, now I've, I've got the piece back on the lathe, as you can see. Um, because the watercolour is water-based, I can't use an acrylic sanding sealer. And I don't know how it's going to react to shellac. And I don't know how it's going to react to cellulose. So, I'm going to have to take a bit of a punt with it. To be honest, um, yeah, I, uh, mm. so I think I'm going to go with cellulose. I'm going to go with a cellulose sealer and see what happens. So I'm going to get, I'm going to spin the lathe. Oh, that's pretty. Um, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. Spin the lathe fairly, fairly slow, and just see what happens when I put the cellulose sealer on the rim. Okay, a bit of colour is coming off. But not a lot. That's okay. Right, I think... I'm going to spin the lathe and do the bare wood with the cellulose sealer. Right, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off the lathe. And then dab the sealer onto the design. Let it soak into the towel. And then just dab the sealer all over. design which should then minimize any smearing right that'll do get it back on the lathe and leave it to dry that was scary <laughs> now the cellulose seal is dry I'm going to very very carefully rub it back with 0000 wire wool virtually no pressure clean it off and then use Hampshire Sheen original I've got no idea if this is going to pull the colour out, we'll see. No, nope, it doesn't appear to be, which is good. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to apply one more coat. And then I'll buff it up. There. There's the final piece. I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. And I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this, week's, um, this week's video. And you, you have been inspired to have a go at some pyrography and watercolour colouring yourself. Um, Please do like, share and subscribe if, uh, if you have enjoyed it and if you feel so inclined then please do leave a comment. I reply to all comments. It might take me a couple of weeks but I will always reply to you. Um, 
Thanks very much indeed for watching. If you would like a copy of the design, then everybody on my mailing list will be receiving a copy in the next few days. Um, but if you haven't uh, joined the mailing list, then do, and I will email you a copy of the design straight away. Well, thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you on Friday for Turner's Journey episode 33, I think it is, um, this coming week. And, uh, of course, I'll see you next week for another Turning Project video. Many thanks, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye for now.